What's up everyone? Today we're going to take a look at these two expressions. Right, we're back into algebra again. So we have the two expressions here. 1 over radical 3 plus radical 5 plus radical 8 versus 1 uh, over radical 3 plus radical 5 plus radical 7. So before we go on and try to simplify or rationalize both expressions, Let's pause the video and try to th think of the following question. Which one is actually easier to rationalize? Are you ready for it? The answer is the first one is actually easier. Even the second one has the difference that is two, right? Three, five, and seven. There are two apart inside of the square root. It is actually a lot harder to simplify the one on the right hand side than the one on the left hand side. Why? Here is the reason. On the left hand side, we see that we have radical 3 and radical 5 and radical 8. So here is a trick to simplify this kind of problem. We see that 8 is actually equal to 3 plus 5. So to rationalize it, we're going to multiply the conjugate. In other uh, to be more precise, is the um, rational conjugate. Well, you know, radical conjugate of this expression. But since we have three terms, we need to think wisely how to uh, choose our uh, our radical conjugates. To do so, we're going to take the sum of these two minus the third term. So we are going to take radical 3 plus radical 5 minus radical 8. Let me use a different color. Minus radical 8. And of course, we need to do the same thing on the top so that we're not changing the value of it. Why do we do that? Remember, we just said that 8 is equal to 3 plus 5. So, if we're going to multiply the denominator, we can group it this way. We have th radical 3 plus radical 5. Let's treat it as just one term or give a name of it, x. Then we have x plus radical 8 times x minus radical 8 which means we can now use the difference of uh, squares to get x squared minus the radical 8 squared. So it means that we have x squared, which is radical 3 plus radical 5 squared, minus the square of radical 8 or square of 8, which is of course just 8. The radical and the square cancels out with each other. So on top, we just have this, this term above. Good. Now, why is this helpful? Now we have the square of sum. So let's simplify that part. We'll do it with a, uh, we'll do the scratch work aside. So the sum squared is equal to square of the first term, which is 3, plus 2ab, which is 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 5, which is square root of 15, plus the square of the last term, which is plus 5. So that now, for the whole number part, we have 3 plus 5, giving us 8, and then plus the term in the middle, 2 times square root of 15, like this. And here is why we want to do it this way. Because we see that the 8 will always be able to cancel out with this 8 up here. And this is also a reason why we say that the first expression is easier to rationalize. Because as long as we know the, uh, what is the right expression of um, uh, radical conjugate, we can always be able to cancel out quickly so that we end up with for denominator we end up with 2 times radical 15 
so that we only have one term left. Over um, the top, which is, well, yeah, um, in the denominator and where the top is radical three plus radical five minus radical eight. And since we're trying to rationalize it, um, we're going to write as two radical two. Good. And last but not least, we still need to get rid of the radical 15 on the bottom. So we just need to again multiply by square root of 15. So that on the denominator, these two together will get rid of the radical. So we end with 2 times 15, which is 30. And then on top, we just need to multiply in to see what we get. We'll have 3 times 15, which is 45. But that's equal to 9 times 5. So we have 3 radical 5 plus 5 times 15 is 75, which is 25 times 3. So if we rationalize it, we have 5 radical 3. And then minus 2 times, well, 2 plus uh, 2 times 15 is 30. We, there's nothing we can yeah, take out. So this is it. We just finished our calculation and rationalized the expression. How about the right hand side? Why is it harder? Well, because we cannot use the same trick anymore. There is no way we can cancel out nicely as we saw uh, from the left hand side. So to do the right hand side, we actually need a little bit more space to do it. Give me a second. Okay, so let's take a look at the second expression. 1 over radical 3 plus radical 5 plus radical 7. What do we get? Well, again, we need to rationalize it. But this time, there's nothing much we can do besides using the same trick twice. Why? Again, because no matter which one we choose to be negative, we won't be able to cancel out nicely yet. This is what I meant. Suppose that we want to uh, um, we want to leave the term in the middle. Um, this is what I meant. If we're trying to make the term in the middle negative, so that uh, we will cancel out one of them, we won't be cancel out nicely and to end up with only one term in the denominator. Let's see what happened. So, if we're going to take the middle term out, uh, radical 5 out, so uh, we'll get radical 3 plus radical 5, no, plus radical 7 minus radical 5. Now, of course, we have to do the same thing on top in order not to change the value. So, we end up with the following expression. We have radical 3 plus radical 7 minus radical 5 over the square of radical 3 plus radical 7. I shouldn't put it this way. This way is good. Um, minus square of radical 5, which is just 5. But what is in this here? Well, let's take a look. Radical 3 plus radical 7 quantity squared is equal to, again, we have square of this, which is 3, plus 2 times the product, which is 2 times radical 21, plus square of the last term, which is 7. We end up with 10 plus 2 radical 21. So put it back in. We still can end up with 5 plus 2 times 20, uh, 2 times radical 21 on, uh, in the denominator meaning we don't end up with one term we still, end up with, uh, we still have two terms so we cannot simply multiply with some uh, square root of some number in, or, in order to rationali rationalize the denominator yet so what do we need to do? We can uh, 
there's only one thing we can do. Multiply with the conjugates one more time. Now this time, we can just simply take the conjugate of this whole thing because there are only two terms. So we will get five minus two radical 21 uh, as what we are going to multiply. So what do we get? We get five squared, which is 25 minus two times two is four times 21 is 84. And then we need to multiply this to here everything in. So we will get the long expression up here. 5 minus 5 radical 5. And then here we're going to multiply with 2, uh, negative 2 times radical 21. So we get 21 times 3 is 63, which is 9 times 7. So 9 times 7 means that we have radical 7 here. We put the 9 turns into 3, so we have 6. And then, similarly, we get 14 radical 3. And then, negative times negative is positive. So, we finally get to our result. Which is equal to, well, we have <clears throat> 25 minus 84, which is negative 59 and then let's see what we can simplify well the radical 105 is up there there's only this term here we cannot do much so we already did this next radical 7 we have minus 6 plus 5 which is negative 1 copy okay this is also good then we also have radical 5 here, like this. And finally, we have this and that. We have 5 minus 14, which is negative 9 radical 3. And don't forget, we never want to keep the negative in the denominator because we want it to be unique by having the denominator positive. So pull it out and then multiply on top. We now, we just change all the signs. Like this. Yeah, that's it. So, what do you guys think? Please leave your comment below. I'll see you guys next time.